What's going on YouTube Champer Productions and welcome back to another Transformers video review and in today's video I'll be reviewing the Transformers G1 Blaster Walmart exclusive reissue. Starting the review off by taking a look at the classic 80s packaging. Here on the front we got a picture of Blaster, um, artwork picture of Blaster. Here on the top we got Transformers. Um, here on the top of the box here we got him transforming from his cassette player mode to his robot mode. On the bottom we got the same thing. Now going back to the front of the box here in the bottom left corner they've actually got the old Hasbro logo. I love that little detail. Um, here on the side we just got him in his robot in alt mode. Same thing for this side. Coming around to the back here we've got that nice classic 80s artwork and then here in the bottom left corner we've got his tech specs so if you want to read those go ahead and pause read those but as far as his bio and stuff is concerned function communications motto when the music is rocking I'm rolling. Finds all Earth music interesting, but it's rock and roll, good, hard and loud, that really sparks his circuits, in the forefront of any situation he's involved in. As AM, FM, stereo, cassette player, he can perform as deck plus receive radio signals of all frequencies, with power outputs as low as 1 to 1 million watts. Acts as Autobot communication sensor and can transmit up to 4,000 miles. Carries electro scrambler gun that disrupts electrical devices. So for the packaging, that's really about it. Very nice box. Love the 80s styled um, box. I, I really like these G1 reissues. Um, I think they're really cool. But setting the box off to the side... And here we have Blaster and his AM FM radio cassette player. This thing looks so cool in this mode. Such a cool figure. Um, just doing a quick overview of it. It's pretty clean. Um, there's actually not a whole lot of kibble. I mean, you can see his head sticking out the back there. Sup, Blaster? How you doing? But overall, it looks really good in this mode. Taking a look at some of the details that have been molded into this figure, you can see right here we got the on and off switch right there, which I, <laughs> which I think is pretty funny. It's molded in in between on and off. It's not on and it's not off. But um, you got the speakers molded into the front there. Got some stickers and the stickers have been pre-applied, so you don't have to apply the stickers when you get this figure out of the box. Got some stickers there on the front. We've got the tuning button right here and then bringing it in a little bit closer we've got this classic rub symbol right here which when you rub it shows you that he is an autobot really cool i love those little rub stickers i think they're so neat um but yeah i got some more sticker detailing we got the autobot insignia sticker right there which is really cool um, this thing does have some functionality in, in cassette mode. Uh, three buttons here along the front. This is the play button right here, and it's actually got play, off, and eject. Play button, click that down, it'll stay down. The off button resets the play button, and then the cassette button, or the eject button, actually controls the cassette door. So whenever you push it, it opens up. You would be able to fit one of the cassette players, or the one of the cassette tapes in there, um... I know there were a few that came out like Rewind and Ram Horn, but unfortunately he doesn't come with any of those, so um, there is that. On the back though, this is something I think is pretty cool. You got a headphone or an earphone output right here. That's a really nice detail in my opinion. Also on the back here you got Hasbro 1984. Pretty cool overall, really cool um, alt mode for a Transformer in my opinion. He looks really good as well. Um, I just think he's a really cool figure. So, for some size comparisons, let's bring in the leader of the Autobots, G1 Optimus Prime. And I would say this is pretty accurate. Blaster turned into a giant cassette player, not really. They did mass shifting, so he shrunk from robot mode. But, still cool comparison. You got G1 Prime, G1 Blaster. Setting him off to the side. Bring in G1 Hot Rod. So you can see how they look side by side. Bring in a Decepticon G1 Blitzwing. G1 Blitzwing Jet Mode. For some more modern size comparisons, here is the Transformers um, Target Exclusive Bumblebee, Mo uh, Bumblebee Movie Leader Class Soundwave. Just to show you how these two look, um, I think they scale 
pretty good together. I think they look pretty good side by side. Um, unfortunately, I do not have G1 Soundwave, um, so this is the best that I've got. Um, but just taking a look at them in their cassette modes, they look good. I think they look good side by side. Our two uh, cassette playing rivals. Now for the transformation of Blaster, it is pretty fun and simplistic. So to start off with, we're going to take the splat carry handle and move it over to the right. Then you take these two sides of the boombox mode or the cassette player mode and you just rotate them down and around. And then you can just take the legs and collapse them and they will just slide up on those slider hinges. Then you can take the carry handles and fold them up alongside a leg. Make sure the black carry handle here is folded all the way down or scooted all the way down or else it won't tab into the leg properly, but just have that into place. Then you take the feet, fold them out, just like so. Coming up to the upper body of the robot mode, take the arms, rotate them out, and then collapse them into the shoulders like so. Take the hands, fold them down, swivel them around and then you can fold down the rest of the arm just like so do that on both sides come on there we go then take the head fold it forward and turn it around and here we have blaster in his robot mode robot mode and robot mode for Blaster looks pretty good. It is an 80s figure. There's not too terribly much going on with it, but it still looks good. Doing a quick 360 turnaround, as you can see, again, there's not a whole lot going on with it, but it was the 80s. They couldn't do anything like we can now with our Transformer figures, but again, it still looks really good. Taking a look at the details that it does have though, as you can see we got some stickers right above the feet. We got the speakers that carry over from his uh, cassette mode. We pretty much keep a lot of the same detailing, the same stickers from cassette mode. And they just carry over into robot mode. And I mean overall it still looks pretty good. It is a good looking figure. Moving up to the upper body we still keep the cassette door and everything. And then we move to the shoulders and these are the only new stickers that appear in robot mode but they do look nice taking a look at the head sculpt of blaster here moving the camera up just a smidge more as you can see it's done actually pretty good got some nice yellow eyes some silver paint and the silver paint is done really nicely um yeah it looks good moving on to the back of the figure here we keep the exact same stuff from cassette mode Moving our way down, same stuff, we get the output on the leg there, but as you can see, just a lot of the same stuff, but it is a good looking robot mode, and it's a good looking figure, I really do like it, I think it's pretty cool. And for some size comparisons, G1 Prime, G1 Hot Rod, And G1 Blitzwing for the Decepticon side of things. <laughs> so, yeah, there is a little bit of height difference in between these few figures. Now, bringing in a more modern figure, here we have the Target Exclusive Soundwave for comparison again. And, I mean, I think these two look good side by side. Um, they both look Pretty good, like I said. Um, um, the G1 Soundwave was more of a Voyager class size figure, so he'd probably be around right here on Blaster. So more or less about half his height, a little bit taller. But in terms of a display where these two are in height and scale with each other, I think these look good. Uh, I think this comparison and the scale works really well. And if you wanted to display these two in just sort of a static... Uh, pose then this works i think it looks really good um in terms of a sound wave and blaster uh display now in terms of articulation of blaster <laughs> he's a g1 figure he's an 80s toy he doesn't have much articulation head can spin around full 360 and can look up due to transformation but it, it just looks weird <laughs> Um, arms are on ratchet joints and can spin full 360. Hands can swivel due to transformation, and that's really about it. Um, the legs, if you move the arms out of the way, the legs can kick outwards, but that's really it. <laughs> Again, it's a G1 toy. It doesn't have a whole lot of articulation. He can hold his rifle, however. Um, just take it and come here. Just take it, tab it into his hand. 
and just like that, he's holding his rifle, and it looks pretty good. So, there you have G1 Blaster. So this has been my review of G1 Blaster. Is it a good figure? In today's standards, not really. But this is an 80s figure and is more of a, and is more of a collector's uh, item. It's not really a modern action figure, but it's a collector's thing. I think it's really cool. In my opinion, it's worth picking up. Um, this is the G1 reissue, the Walmart exclusive reissue. But either way, it's still a really cool figure. It's fun to transform. It has... Both modes look really cool, um, even though the robot mode doesn't have hardly any articulation, you don't really need it. It's it's a G1 figure, it's from the 1980s, still looks cool just standing there in all of its 80s glory. I just think it's a really cool figure. So, I hope you all enjoyed this review, if so be sure to leave a like, comment, what you think of Blaster in the comment section below, and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video from my channel. That's all for me, Champion Productions, signing off.